All right, I'm going to do a rough sketch, uh, not a lot of detail since the paint just kind of goes its own way. I don't worry about getting it exact. I just rough it in. I try to do, if I'm doing a creek, I stay away from S curves, I kind of keep them uh, a zigzag, like a Z shape trees going in different directions, not all the same direction, not all the same size, make it an interesting shape. Um, I'm just doing this out of my head. I have enough reference photos, but I don't need it on this. So like I said, just stay away from the, sh the curves. Keep them on these little zigzag shapes. So just a real rough sketch. Okay, the mask fluid. First, my brushes, I put some Dawn liquid detergent on just to kind of keep it from clumping up while I can paint. It doesn't ruin the brush right away. And I'm just putting the mask fluid on the snow uh, because I want to paint freely in the stream, the creek coming through, the zigzag coming through is the stream. I'm protecting is where the snow is going to be. I don't always do this. I'm gonna use my finger. It actually avoids brush strokes. When you use that mask fluid, a lot of times you get brush strokes. So I'm just gonna use my finger. This is a rough sketch. This is not going to be a real finished, detailed painting. I'm just showing you uh, what's behind a painting if I were to do it in detail. So this is fast kind of marking out some of the areas. I may not follow this exactly when I finish, but roughing in how I'm going to uh, look at this in a basic way. Again, the little white spots I'm gonna preserve. Um, there's so many ways to do it. I don't have to use mass fluid. I can paint around it, but this is just one way I thought people would enjoy seeing. Um, then I'll paint it. You have the mask fluids down. Uh, I'll show you my materials real quick here. Uh, I use only arches paper anymore. I messed with others. This is a cold press, 140 pound. It's a block, but I actually prefer the sheets um, in here. Also, uh, the arches again, which I think is important, and rough press. Um, they are the two that I think work the best. I've messed with all the other brands, and I like the big sheets, full sheets, actually better than the blocks. But for the demo, this is a rough sketch demo. It's not all that detailed paints, uh, get them out, have them ready to go. Uh, I'll activate them when I'm ready to get started. Um, I use Winsor Newton. It doesn't really matter. I think as long as you're consistent. I like the Winsor Newton Cerulean Blue, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine. Uh, they're the, the blues I, I like to use. Um, have a, a lot of different colors, but here with the brushes, I like the mop brushes. I use uh, many of the Escoda. I'm not touting any of the particular brands. I like the Escoda brushes. These mop brushes work very well. They hold a lot of paint. You can keep painting with them. Uh, the Perla with Escoda, they're, they're really nice. Again, mop brushes, just showing you these are what I think are the most important as far as brushes go. Squirt bottle, invaluable. These are just, I put water in them. Um, it's like a sepa call bottle. I just put water in them and they're invaluable to me for um, adding texture, wetness to the paper, uh, the water, uh, tissues, tissue paper for blotting and scrubbing. Uh, I do not use uh, the paper towels. Uh, the tissues, I think, are the, uh, the way to go with those. The uh, paper towels, uh, to me, uh, they're, they're good for cleanup, but not, not, not on the paper. You don't want to touch that to your paper. It, it mars it. So you want to use tissue. It's much softer, and it lifts the paint out you're going to scrub and lift out. Okay, here we go. I'm going to speed it up. I'm going to really speed this up. No sense in killing uh, too much time here. I put on a slope and I wet the entire stream. Get all my mop brushes ready to go. Activate the colors I'm going to use. Now I'm going to make a thing that almost looks like a rainbow, kind of crazy, but I wet and load. It just makes it easier not to do it, but I like to load my brushes ahead of time. So I have a yellow brush, a yellow red brush, a blue brush. I have them all loaded and ready to go. I wet the paper. And now I'm gonna do these crazy stripes right down the water. These stripes go up and down. Just paint in the yellow. I'm going for a glow in the water. This is gonna be a glowing water. And I'm gonna basically reflect that into the trees as well. So yellows, reds, blues, dark green, brown, real dark, and then I wet the whole thing. I blot up some of the running spots. I'm wetting all of it. Sometimes I have to add a little color where I see it needs it. And I'm just wetting the whole thing and running it together, mixing and mingling. Get a little dark in the corners. And 
this is still all wet. I just want to mingle my paints. I'm running them into each other. I don't want those stripes when I'm done. So I start out with stripes, but I completely eliminate them. By the time I'm done, I just wet this and it's, it's real wet. So I'm just running it together. I'm looking at it, and trying to put a glow into the water. Yellow's in the middle, reds, and it just fans out almost like a sunshine. And then I'm gonna do something similar, but splattering in the tree line. Just wet it, get some dark edges along the snow bank. Remember, I protected my snow with a mask. I'm gonna, it's damp. I sped this up. I'm gonna take what you call a thirsty brush and just pull out a few disturbances. And we've all seen this. If you've done watercolor, you just kind of pull back out a little bit and get a little bit of a disturbance in the water. It's, uh, the paint is still damp. You can't do it when it's wet or it's just gonna fill right back in and leave a dark mark. So it's a timing thing. When it's almost dry with a damp brush, you can do this. I'm going to go around and maybe add a few little dark spots here. Um, just pull down a few. It's just about dry now. So you got to be careful when you touch a, a brush into a painting. Again, I'm pulling out. It's still damp. But if you put a wet brush into a drier painting, you're going to get a bloom. So you don't want to bloom. Whatever you put onto the painting has to be drier than the painting. So if you have a damp painting, then your brush has to be even more dry than that, or you're going to get a bloom. You put wet brush down into a damp painting, you're going to get that disturbance. So just got to be careful. You got to know that your brush can't be as wet as the painting. I'm pulling out a little bit more here and there. It fills back in um, quickly while it's, if it's a little too wet, so it's a timing issue and then I'll dry it. Don't always use a dryer, but I'm doing it for time's sake. Uh, it's best to just let it dry on its own. But since I'm hurrying and doing this, I'll, I'll put the dryer on it. In the beginning, I let it mingle mix first. If I'm gonna dry it, it's after it's almost dry, then I'll put the dryer to it. But I really try not to do that in the beginning. All right, now I'm going to um, splatter the trees above. I'm gonna try to match up the same colors in the creek. And protect it just use scrap paper below cover up the creek now the tree and sky area i'm gonna try to match up basically the same colors yellow in the middle this is dry paper and i'm splattering matching up those colors there dry paper splattering wet droplets of paint yellow oranges reds in the middle and as i move out with the darker reds blues and then browns and dark greens on the outer edge i don't need to fill the entire area with it I can always come back and do it again, but I want heavy little drops here and there uh, matching up roughly what's below in color. And after I throw a bunch of drops, I'm going to get those water bottles and, and throw droplets of water into it. Lay in some. And here's that bottle. And I, I'm not spraying, I'm doing droplets, half pumps, not full pumps. And just little droplets of water everywhere. And then I just kind of shake it around, try not to run it through the painting. I control it from running down into the painting with the tissue. And you can see how the droplets are running like branches everywhere. Scrape, I'm using a scraper and just scraping a little tissue to blot out, just using a uh, palette knife and scraping up. All those little droplets, I'm moving them around and all the little white areas look like snow or uh, it just gives it a branch effect. Scrape some down for some branches and trees. Then I'll work on the trees later. But I have um, a forest, uh, a bunch of trees and branches. And it will come together as, as you go. I do not use the blow dryer. And I'm just going to scrape a few areas in. Again, speeding this up. Use a brush, brushing a few branches, scraping a few areas, just touching up. I'll come in and do this later with real detail. The more detail you want to do, it's up to you. You can keep it impressionistic like I'm going to do, or you can add more and more detail. Just don't kill it with detail. Okay, I'm going to bring some more shadows from the trees down. So I'm going to wet the entire, I got to wet the entire creek if I'm going to add anything to it so it bleeds in. So I'm going to mist it with water and just pull some darks down in here and there. Get those 
dark branches and trunks and that sort of thing. So I'm going to re-wet. I don't always do this, but sometimes I'll look at it and think it needs some darker value changes. So I wet the entire creek so I don't leave brush strokes that have hard edges. And then I just pull down into it to kind of highlight the lights in the middle and the darker edges. Just using kind of a flat brush and getting up along the edge and just pulling down into the wet area that I have for the whole creek again. And then just let it run and mingle. Now it's time to pull the mask fluid off. Use uh, one of these rubber lifts that you can get with the mask fluid. You can buy it separately. It's just a square, like rubber cement remover. And I just pull all this mask off. You can grab it and pull it even like I am. I'll rub it off and even just grab it and pull it. And just get all off. And, and you, you see what, what you're left with. And there's a lot of choices here after I get done to this point. But now I have my white paper preserved to do the snow. All right, time to do the shadows and other details. Of course, again, I'm gonna speed it up, get my blues, find the right color blue, some ultramarine and cobalt. And then this frees me up to just do my shadows without having to paint around something. I just follow the contour of what I want the ground to look like. I got a hump, like a hillside here, so you're gonna curve it around. I'm coming down behind, because I wanna show that it's coming down the hill, so I go down with the angles. Since the light is coming from the center, I want the shadows to fan out like a clock. Uh, it all depends on which direction you're standing or way it's going, but I'm looking into the sun, so I'm gonna kind of fan those shadows out. And I'm free to just paint the shadows in. It's not necessarily the way you have to do it, but it's a way that I've found that works really easy. I don't have to paint around things, and you can keep your brush strokes for your shadows fast, because you don't want them to be too, um, dab, 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 it doesn't look right. So I'm going in and just freely being able to paint the shadows and then I can come in and put my trees over top of it. It's kind of a, a fun, quick way of, of getting your shadows in without having to paint around everything. So the darker shadows mean you're, you're closer to the object and the lighter shadows are further away. So I can do light and dark shadows. I can do the little divots and holes in the snow and the little pockets and dents and it's all on damp. I dampened all that white so I can let the blue bleed in and, and have soft edges. Um, so I did not do it on dry paper. I'm putting this blue on a, a damp paper. It, it just softens the edges a little bit. Now I'm just putting in trunks. Here's where it really depends on how much detail and how, how much realism versus impressionism you wanna do. Since this is a fast demo, and I'm not really trying to make this uh, real photographic or, or too realistic, but giving the viewer an idea of a great way uh, to look at tackling a painting like this. And like I said, you can take your time and really hone in the detail and, and clean up the edges, or you can make it impressionistic and fast. Um, so I can do as many trees and branches as I want. I would caution you not to do too many. You don't want to over overdo it. Uh, you can sometimes kill the paint with too much detail. I'm going to splatter a little bit of blue down in my close hillside, just texture to cover up the painting, throw it on damp paper, and, and then just, it'll, it'll dry a little lighter. It looks a little shocking at first until you get all the details in. And again, that's like a, an embankment, so I want it to be kind of curved down, just like the back is a hill, give that impression of hill. So you, you run your your shadows up and down as opposed to zigzagging in a different direction. So just laying in the shadow, it's just one of several ways you can do it. But uh, it's a fun option that I show people how to do. Scraping, uh, you know, here and there. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up again and, and kind of get through it here, get the last little details for this demo, painting in trunks, and like I said, whatever detail I wanna do. Fun thing, interesting little fact, if you haven't picked up on it, there's no white paint. Now, not that I'm against it. If I need to use white paint, I can do that. But you know, this is all the white paper showing through, which always impresses people who don't paint watercolor, or even people who paint watercolor, how you can do it without white paint. That's just the paper. Just doing the trees, and like I said, how much detail you want to do is up to you, how much realism versus impressionism you want it to look like. Um, 
little dark trunks, a uh, little cad scarlet on the one edge of a damp trunk so I can get a little light on one side, dark on the other. Gives the um, impression that it's uh, curving away. The light's hitting the inside of the tree. And just I put a little cad scarlet, then I come right back in with a dark sepia. And just wherever I think I ne it needs it. Uh, again, it's just a demo painting, so I'm not gonna get too caught up in too much detail, some trunks here. Now, if I wanna come back in, I'm scraping out. If I wanna come back in and touch an area here and there that I think could use white paint, there's nothing wrong with that. I haven't yet, I might. Okay, the rest of this is just detail um, that I wanna do. And if you're painting something similar, just wherever you think you need it. Uh, dark along the creek line, you know, the water line, you're gonna have this dark edge between the creek and the snow bank where it just goes back in there. So you wanna get the dark line. I'm gonna add a little more dark shadows on the uh, far side of the embankment where the sun's not hitting it. Um, just touching up here and there, some shadows, give more shape to that embankment by um, darkening the far away parts, lightening it as you get closer and just putting some depth into the embankment uh, where holes are, deep spots might be, rocks along the edge, uh, even a little bit of slushy snow down into the water uh, right here. I'm gonna make that more of a little icy edge, just like across the creek on the other side, I did this here. Uh, just give a little bit of a frozen water around the edge kind of thing. Just looking at the areas that I wanna add or do something with detail. And again, just as, as much as you want or as little as you want, this is all about a glowing snow scene and using very little to no uh, pigment, uh, white pigment. But if I want to use it, no trouble. People see me do these for years and, and for a while, I, you know, I don't teach uh, a lot of classes. I'm just a painter and I've always had people ask about it. So I do a few workshops, do a few classes and uh, people are always amazed at this. I had learned actually uh, some of these techniques oh, 20 some years ago from a woman by the name of Anita Engel who was really my mentor and someone that I really liked a lot and, and learned from one of many artists that I've uh, taken workshops uh, many years ago when I was younger. Uh, some of this technique that I did earlier uh, was things that I did in her workshop. And just throwing some detail in. Just about uh, done, pull the tape off. Got a lot of tape on here, but. And there we go, fast demo, kind of fun. And like I said, do whatever you want.